it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a spring shawl well we have called it shawlette because it's a shawl but it's not very big at all but it does a fabulous job so here I have my little spring shawl I'm going to put it on and it's just going to cover my neck in my coat and do you know what that's all you need sometimes so this is a really handy shawlette to have and as you can tell look I've even got three tassels on it but the special thing about this shawlette is actually it's made from one ball of yarn yes just one ball and I even have three tassels can you believe that so very often there are these lovely balls of yarn that we buy in lovely colors often variegated you come home and you think hmm I now have this lovely ball but what can I make with it because there's not that many projects that actually only take one ball of yarn so Karen and I set out to design a shawl that would just take the one ball so this brightly colored version here is Karen's version she tried it out she sort of worked it out a little bit and indeed she was able to make this shawlette with a lovely pattern just one ball and she even had enough for two tassels so I tried the same thing of course for the video and I ended up with three tassels so I am so so happy so yes it's a lovely little shawl it's a lovely little pattern very very easy to do and you only need one ball so let's get started so for this pattern I'm using James C. Brett Aurora, it's double knitting yarn and this is a ball of 100 grams. There are 345 meters on the ball or 377 yards and I am going to be using this ball for my shawlette. So you just need the one ball. So you will need scales to weigh your yarn. As you can see I've got about 100 grams left. This is what I took off to make my tassels with so I will be making those first. I'll be using a three and a half hook for my tension so use the hook that you usually use the yarn is prescribed for a four. Then here we have darning needle scissors and of course my infamous chocolate box for making the tassels. Uh, this gives me a revolution of 12 inches or 30 centimeters so perfect for my tassels. So let's get started. So I have wound around my chocolate box about 35 times, twice. Then here I have two lengths of 30 centimeters and here I have two lengths of two meters each. So that will then uh, be plenty to finish my tassels with. So let's tie one of these in there. Voila. And so first of all, we make the tassels so we know we've got those, you know, the tassels are the most important part of a shawl. <laughs> OK, so we've got this and then this is for the second one. And then here, this is for my band. So let's lay this on there and let's wind it around like so. Really tightly trying not to get this one entangled and making it a little bit wide so it's a nice wide band on our tassel so go down voila making it a little bit wider and then come up again every time making sure that this one doesn't get in there And voila, that seemed long enough, so I didn't need actually two meters, just one meter was enough. There we go. And now I'm going to put, I'm going to cut this off first because obviously it's far too long. Then put your darning needle in there. Voila, put the end in. And bring it through. There we go. So that is the tassel made. I will cut these when I am attaching them. I'll make the second one now and then we're ready to get started on our shawl. So 
So let's get started. We're going to make a slip knot. Insert your hook, close up the loop, and we're going to make a chain of four. So one, two, three, and four. Then you go back to your first chain, insert into the first chain, bring through your working yarn and also through the loop on your hook. There we go. So we have a tiny little circle to get started in. Then we are going to chain two. Now this chain two is not going to count as a stitch. It's just going to help us to gain the height. So we're going to be disregarding the chain two throughout the project. Now we're going to do three double crochets into the circle. So yarn over, into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we need to do that another two times so that we have three double crochets. And these are the three V's of our three double crochets. Now we're going to chain two, one and two, you turn. This is completely disregarded. We are going to place one double crochet in each stitch. So yarn over, skip the two chains because they're not there, so to speak. Then go into the V of that first stitch. So that's the one where that chain two is coming out of. And do another lot of double crochets into the next few stitches. So we do three double crochets in this row as well. Now we are going to get started with increasing. So we do chain two, we turn, we place a double crochet in each stitch of this row. So also, of course, in that very first stitch where that chain two is coming out of. So we are going to do three double crochets, just like that. But then into the last stitch where we have done our third double crochet, we're going to add a double crochet. There we go, because we're going to have to start increasing now. Where you have done this increase, just place your stitch marker just to make sure that you know on which side you will be placing your increases. OK, so now we're going to chain two, one, two, you disregard, you turn and you're going to place one double crochet in each stitch. Because, of course, we now have an extra stitch. So we are now doing four double crochets. Voila! See? So now for row six, we're going to start with a chain two. You turn and you're going to get started with doing double crochets in each stitch. But as you get to that side where we have put the stitch marker. Look, you know that in here you're going to have to do an extra stitch. Voila. So this was row six. Now for row seven, we are going to do chain two, turn, and you do your five double crochets because when you end this row you're not on the side with the stitch marker so that means you are not going to be increasing there that's it okay so now we start with the two chains we turn and we start doing our double crochets and as we end the row, we will be doing two double crochets in that last stitch because we are on the side with 
the stitch marker. And if you need to bring up that stitch marker with you so that it is really clear and obvious that you are increasing on this side only. OK, so you will notice that one of your sides is just about straight and the other one is going to start growing. So this is what you're going to be doing until you have used up 50 grams of yarn. So my amount was just over 100 grams, so I'm going to use up 50 grams and then we will start the second part of our shawl. So use your scale towards the end of your 80th row because you will have to do 80 rows. Um, that will use up about 50 grams of yarn. So use your scale to measure how much more you need to use up. So this is how you are going to continue. We have just done row six and row seven, and those are the two rows that you're going to keep on repeating. So that was a row six. Now we're going to do a row seven. So one, two, turn, and you're going to get started by just doing double crochets in each stitch. And when you get to the end of the row, you will realize that there is no stitch marker there. So there is no need to do an increase. Voila. So we have done the same amount of stitches as we did here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, so we are now going to continue with doing row six row seven row six row seven row six is the one where you're going to increase at the end row seven is the one where you're just going to do one double crochet in each stitch and it's as simple as that <laughs> So I think I have made it to the midpoint of my shawl. I have just done row 80. I now have 40 stitches here. Did my last increase where the stitch marker is and I am now on the opposite side of it. This weighs about 55 grams. This weighs about 55 grams because my ball was more than 100 grams. So I have been using my scales all the time to make sure, certainly towards the end, um, to make sure, you know, that I was stopping in time. I also used my stitch marker to help me count my rows. So I just went along, then I started counting and then I kept remembering where my stitch marker was. So at one point it was at row 70 and then I knew I had to do another 10 rows. So that was quite handy uh, to use a stitch marker in that way. Now for the second part of the shawl we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to use the stitch mark to indicate where we have to do something special. But this time we are no longer increasing. We are going to be decreasing. So make sure that you are on the opposite side of where your stitch marker is. So you've just started here back again. Now we're going to get started with a row as what we have been used to. So we chain two, return and we start doing a double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end. So I've made it all the way to the end, apart from the last two stitches. This chain two doesn't count. We don't take it into account, so we just disregard this. These are the last two stitches of our row. And now, of course, we are decreasing. So what we are doing is doing two double crochets together in this stitch. So you start two double crochets. So one double crochet in here, one double crochet in here, but you don't finish them. Then you finish them together. And so this is the midpoint of our shawl. We are now going to be going in and our rows are going to get shorter. So chain two, turn, one double crochet, in the next stitch. 
and this of course is just a row where we do the same number of stitches as we have just created. So this is row 82 where we just do the same amount of stitches as we have created in 81 and then the next row will be 81 and 81 is a row where we are doing decreases at the end. So once again it will be quite easy for you to remember you've got the stitch marker there each time you get there you're going to decrease. You take two double crochets together at the end of the row and Yes, so now, of course, towards the end of this shawl, hopefully we've done everything we can to make sure that you are going to get to the end and be able to finish those last few rows and not run out of yarn. So I'm going to keep going the way I have shown you just now, doing a repeat of rows 81 with the two double crochets at the end taken together and then a row of 82 just you know confirming all those stitches so i will see you now when yeah my rows are really short and i might have <laughs> a tiny bit of yarn left over so we will see how it goes <laughs> Oh my goodness <laughs> I've had great fun doing this um, yes so I am really loving how the colors go in this yarn look there's a couple of stitches always with a different color already sort of telling you it's on its way I've really um, yeah I've really enjoyed using this yarn it's turned out really nicely but of course what you're all waiting for is how far am I and Am I going to have enough yarn? So yes, I have got some left and I am doing these amounts of stitches. So four stitches left to do. So let's finish the shawl together. I've just done the row where I ended in two double crochets together because I'm on the side with the stitch marker. And that stitch marker has been such a great help. So I know now that I'm doing just a row of double crochets and nothing um, has to go together. Um, and yeah, every time I um, went to the side of the stitch marker, that's where I did the together. Um, so easy to remember because obviously the stitch marker is there. And I have to say, I did keep putting it up so, so it would be in my view because that does help. So make sure you move it along as you go. So here, yeah, I'm doing the two together here. Voila. So now I have three V's left over. So I'm just going to do one, two, and I'm going to do the three double crochets there. And this, of course, is how you are going to finish your shawl as well. And yes, I have got some yarn left over. So this is the amount that I have left over. We made two tassels so i might just make a third one with that so for now we're just going to do one two and three chains then you turn and you're going to attach the chain to the other side because this is really how we started as well here we made that little chain and we are going to use it for attaching our tassel to as well so let's see if we can get the tassels attached to our shawl. So my shawl now, let's weigh it. And also you've got to roll it up nicely so it doesn't overhang. My shawl now weighs, let's see, 93 grams. Oh, you could see it better in the viewfinder than I could here. I have my two tassels, 100 grams. Then I have my leftover. I have my leftover and now it's about 105 and that was just about. So let's make another tassel and attach them to the shawl and I will be back. So I've got my tassel here. I'm going to put those two ends on my darning needle bring it through that loop here that we've got then i'm just going to tie it all together 
with the end that's already there. Voila, do a couple of good knots. And then I take all the ends put them on the needle and push them through the band of the tassel. And make sure you pull it out well and you don't deform the tassel at the top. There we go. Voila. And of course now we're going to have to sort of do a little bit of reshaping here, cut off the longer ends. And that has been attached. Look at that. The one in the middle, I'm going to use this one with my leftovers. And I'm just going to put it around this one here. So I'm going to put one strand on my needle. Put it around the body of that stitch there. Tie them together. You don't have to make it more complicated than it already is. Voila, three knots. Put both the strands on your darning needle and bring that through the, oh, the top and through the band. Now I know these are contrasting strands, but that's okay. That's fine. There we go. And once again, yeah, a little tidy up here. Voila. So I hope you will enjoy making this shawlette. Karen and I had great fun coming up with this. And just to tell you as well that we do sell this yarn on our website. So do go and have a look. Now the shawl, the length of it is one meter 80 centimeters or 70 inches and in the middle the widest part is just about 28 centimeters or 11 inches so it's just big enough to wear to keep your neck warm but also just to wear as a stylish accessory during your work day or just as an extra bit for you to wear so we hope you will enjoy making this. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.